Um, Jazz loves music, always loves music, and she picks up Mandarin from school. What is inspired you to combine uh, music and Chinese together and get a career? Firstly, it was my passion for Chinese because it's so interesting and so unique. And China's got such a long history, so what, you can just see that in the language. It's absolutely fascinating. And I love being able to go and travel in China as well, because you just think about how vast it is. So Nanjing University is in the Jiangsu province. Yeah. And that province itself is about three times the size of the UK, just the one province. Mm. So it's a huge country. So if you can sort of navigate your, yourself around in order to travel, which is one of the things I just love doing. When I was really starting it out, I didn't realise that Chinese would become my USP for singing. So mm. USP is what you call a unique yeah, selling point. point. At least I'm not aware of any other English soprano who speaks Chinese and sings Chinese songs. Mm. But I'm often, often hired for corporate events where there's going to be UK and, and Chinese businessmen or delegates. I was asked to represent the UK in 144 countries mm -hmm. um, by the UK government as part of their Great Britain campaign and that was because I'd spent time in China um, and they wanted me to go over to the Shanghai Great Festival of Creativity so that I could sing to UK and Chinese delegates there and represent UK music. Yeah. I sang quite a few traditional UK songs and, and Chinese songs, but mm -hmm. also at the time I was thinking, well, what's going to really relate to both sets of people that are there? Frozen had just come yeah. out. <laughs> so I decided that I would look up the Mandarin Chinese translation yeah. and sing it in both English and Chinese. Yeah. It went down really well, and I can always tell when something's going down really well in China, because instead of actually looking at you, they're then looking at you through their phones. Yeah. Instead of actually just looking at you. <laughs> so, um, <true>. yeah. <laughs> so that was that was good. That meant that they liked it. I'm able to have so much fun and with with what I sing, and I'm able to take so many different bits of inspiration from places. Like for my debut album, we went to Beijing and recorded mm -hmm. some traditional Chinese instruments for the album. And it's not a world music album. It's not a Chinese album, but it's got a very definite oriental thread running through it which I feel really adds something to it and makes it unique because in the classical world you get people singing the same classical songs over and over again mm -hmm. like Ave Maria, mm -hmm. O mio babino caro, Nessun Dorma, Time to Say Goodbye whereas if you can do these songs in a slightly different way it then sets you apart from everybody else and so having Chinese as part of my background gives me a really interesting and really unique way to then craft my shows and think about the songs that I'm going to sing. Now, there's a lot of cruise liners that are heading out to China because the middle classes are developing so quickly over there and so they've got more disposable income. So I was hired recently to go on a six star cruise liner. I only thought it went up to five, but apparently there's six, <laughs> six. now. <laughs> a show in Mandarin Chinese and singing Chinese songs but no other Western person would get that job because they need to talk to the passengers on board in Chinese but they wanted a Western person because then it makes it more interesting for the Chinese mm. as well mm. because they see Chinese people performing all the time yeah but to have a Western person speaking in Chinese during the show and singing Chinese songs is a different thing been such a huge blessing in my music career. You think about how difficult it is to make money from music in any way by having a unique selling point like that, which I wasn't even aware of when I first started learning it at age 12. Mm. It's, it's so beneficial and so helpful and you can go on to do so many things just by having a language as your second string and it opens up a whole other country for work. You think about the amount of people now who are saying, oh, I can't get a job in the UK, it's really difficult to find a job. Well, if you've got a language, you've then got a whole other country that you can find work in. And there are niche markets there as well. You think about the amount of disposable income that there is in developing countries now, where the middle class is really developing. They're going to need people over there to talk to them, to invite them over to the UK, for example, to help UK tourism. There's, there's a whole market there. You've just got to be creative in your thoughts mm. with it. Um, because you could really be giving yourself a great gift for the future.